people are saying that Julian Assange and WikiLeaks are actually controlled opposition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explore this topic with an open mind, and then I'm going to zoom out into the much larger concept of controlled opposition and how at times we can be a little bit too quick to pull the trigger and engage in insults when it comes to things that we don't entirely agree with. There are two massive red flags as it pertains to Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, which I myself, in fact, just became aware of. Now, the first one is that back in 2010, this dude essentially denigrated people that were questioning the official story of 9-11, which is mind-blowing for anybody that has looked into that topic. And then the second one, which I find to be equally concerning, is when Donald Trump was campaigning for the presidency, he appears to have engaged in behavior that is tantamount to colluding with his campaign team. That right there is extremely concerning, right? And that warrants healthy suspicion and justification for further investigation. However, we also need to consider the larger context and some of the good information that was shared that helped to change the public awareness about a particular topic. So, of course, we are aware of the collateral murder footage that was released in tandem with Chelsea Manning, which, rather than just engaging in fighting the evils of terrorism in the Middle East, which was widely believed, this video footage demonstrated that the U.S. military had, in fact, engaged in war crimes, murdering civilians, and then subsequently tried to cover it up. And this was very significant in changing the global discourse. Then, in correspondence to that, was what was going on in Guantanamo Bay, this torture site, this illegal torture site, where people that were not being charged, they were not being found guilty, they were essentially being kidnapped flown over there and then they were being tortured and this included teenagers and then the third one which is often overlooked but this was also a game changer in multiple ways was the leakage of the Podesta emails and there was a lot of very significant information contained within these emails but what I'm talking about specifically which unfortunately has since been hijacked by like this whole QAnon thing is that it opened up the public's mind to the prospect of VIP pedophilia and although the blowback from the media, especially at that time, and this is when the whole fake news narrative began to kick off, was especially powerful and evocative and entrenched in irrationality and emotion, well, it's just a silly pizza gate. The reality is for anybody that objectively looked into that, there was something legitimately there. So critically considering all of this from a wider viewpoint is essential, right? And it's also important from an observational perspective to recognize that this behavior is not relegated to Julian Assange or WikiLeaks alone either, guys. Jesse Ventura, for example, is well known that when he would go on establishment media, he would not shy away from basically alluding to that 9-11 was an inside job. It was were. a failure of intelligence. Everyone's accepted No, it that. wasn't. We knew before with Condoleezza Rice's memo on August 6th when it stated right in the memo, bin Laden to steal planes and run them into buildings and more stuff is coming out now also how much the bush administration ignored the intelligence it was almost like they ignored it because they wanted it to happen he also wanted to abolish the irs i would abolish the income tax and i would go to a consumption-based national sales tax you wouldn't need the internal revenue anymore and he's written numerous books and held a show helping to expose some of this more shadowy corruption. I'm Jesse Ventura, and this is Conspiracy Theory. Then with the so-called pandemic, he went completely off the reservation and started to encourage everybody to go ahead and get vaccinated. Jordan Peterson had the courage to confront the gender fluidity madness when it was at its apex and how environmentalism is essentially being weaponized. Well, what kind of statement is the planet would be better off with fewer people on it? This is also the problem I have with much of the environmentalist movement is there's a powerful stream of anti-human sentiment that motivates it and masquerading under the guise of virtue on a planetary scale. But then he turns into a Zionist cheerleader for the state of Israel. Peter Joseph, the guy who made those like his documentaries, which exposed the Federal Reserve System, the deep state politics, and 9-11, amongst other things. But then he full-on subscribes to the environmental narrative and even advocates a strategy being propounded by Bill Gates. So what are some technological advancements that you are, are kind of hopeful for like well, when it comes of, to climate change. Yeah, in terms of, of the Bill Gates and some others have pondered this mechanism that can pull uh, pull the carbon out of the air and then, then store it underground. So I think that's probably going to happen. That could at least slow things down a little bit. So that's one thing. That's probably the best thing, actually. You David Aiku has gotten so many things right over the decades, but then he goes and claims that shape-shifting reptilians rule the world. Simple terms, there is a predator race which take a reptile, reptilian form. They're feeding off humanity. They've turned humanity into a slave race. They demand human sacrifice. That's where Satanism comes in. They feed off human energy, particularly feed off the energy of... Which who knows, guys? Maybe they really are. However, unless you have incontrovertible, incontestable evidence to attest to their claim, that is a very bad chess move to play. 
And then Alex Jones, who has likewise gotten it right many times in his career, began to act so bizarrely during Donald Trump's campaigning and presidency and in line with state propaganda that Ron Paul literally called him out on his own show. I don't want to have to, you know, nuke the DMZ. Uh, but if they do strike us first, I think they may be crazy enough to do it. Uh, then it's going to take a, 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 a major commitment to make sure they can't counter response. You're, you're, buy, you're buying into all the garbage that's passed out there by the deep state and neoconservatives and, and the media. My suggestion very clearly on what we should do is we should allow the South Koreans to talk to the North Koreans. What's wrong with that? They're the ones that have everything at stake, and we don't even allow them to do that. So I understand you can say we're ganging up on North Korea and the people hurt are the poor folks in it. That's true. I'm not saying you're wrong. But what about the dictators? What about the horrible, uh, you know, evil leaders of the nation? What are we supposed to do well, about you're them? Uh, Alex, you're, you're, Alex, you're speaking for the neoconservatives. That's their line of talk of why we have to do this. They don't want any more war in North Korea than we do. So I don't really think it's right to say this guy in North Korea is going to, uh, because he's aligned with the Chinese, that they're going to help him, you know, provoke a war with the United States. And even James Corbett, who I consider to be the gold standard of investigative journalism and individual integrity, who I myself, in fact, donate funds to, he got it wrong before in the past as it pertained to the infamous executive order from JFK, Executive Order 11110. End the Fed is a national campaign in the United States that can be found at endthefed.us. The first major action of this campaign is a nationwide rally that is going to be held this coming Saturday, November 22nd, 2008, which of course, my listeners will remember, also marks the anniversary of the assassination of JFK, who by the way, issued an executive order the year before his death, which ultimately sought the abolition of the Federal Reserve and the reinstitution of U.S. notes, not Federal Reserve notes. So what can we learn from all of this, right? Well, the first thing I want to point out, guys, is I'm not trying to be a propagandist myself and I conflate all of these examples together. A young James Corbett getting it wrong about this infamous executive order, which he later clarified and exposed the truth of, should not be confused with a seasoned veteran in Alex Jones acting in a bizarre way that is antithetical to his traditional behavior. Now, that aside, although it is essential to question people and their motives to ascertain the truth, we also need to recognize that just because somebody doesn't perceive the world the same way that you do doesn't automatically make them controlled opposition. And just because you don't agree with them doesn't make it okay to insult and denigrate them either, guys. So many people in the so-called truth community are quick to point out how dangerous and dismissive cancel culture and censorship is. And yet, in the same token, they are perfectly content to dismiss people they don't agree with through insults or labeling them as controlled opposition. And this is why I always try to remind people of the importance of honoring our greater human principles over our limited human perceptions. Because whether it's Jesse Ventura or Julian Assange or David Icke or myself or yourself, We've all taken different paths in this life, guys, which has resulted in different perceptions of objective reality and therefore objective truth. But what's not nearly as divisive, though, is our shared human principles. Things like personal integrity, simple human decency, mutual respect, kindness, empathy, and treating others simply as you'd like to be treated yourself. And as I've explained before, guys, our greater human principles are not the exclusive property of a particular skin color, religion, political party, or tribe. No, they are unifying human principles that have been recorded throughout human history and are the fundamental measurement of what separates us from the parasite and psychopathic class. But because we've had our personal perceptions so skillfully weaponized against one another, we've been downgraded to petty warring factions of tribalism where we've forgotten our deeper human roots and are constantly sacrificing our shared human principles to promote our limited tribal perceptions. And this is the game that the parasite class and their propagandists specialize in, guys. Manipulating the public's perception against one another. And when we sacrifice our human principles, which is the one thing that can truly unite us, when we do this and we play their divide and conquer game, whether we realize it or not, we become a form of controlled opposition, like an unthinking pawn being weaponized on a chessboard we don't even perceive. Now, I want to make it very clear, guys. I'm not saying you cannot scrutinize Julian Assange or anyone you disagree with. 
since powerful questions are imperative to establish powerful truths. But there is a very big difference between resorting to investigation and resorting to name calling and insults. We must never sacrifice our higher human principles in an effort to promote our limited human perceptions. Because the war we are fighting, guys, is not just an information war. It's a war of ideologies and it's a war of principles. And at the highest level, that war is waged by warriors of humanity and warriors of elitism. Those who seek to harm and prey on the innocent and those who seek to protect and empower them. Those who seek to create a truly free and better world and those who seek to control and exploit and enslave the population and the planet. And in that war, guys, there is no weapon more effective than our greater unifying human principles. And when we take on this much greater sense of responsibility and duty, that's when real positive change begins to take place. And if we really want to see an actual revolution out here, that revolution first has to start within, with the responsibility that we embody by the energy we bring into this world and the principles we personify in our everyday lives.